What's up guys and welcome into Thunder Steve 85 Gaming. Thank you for tuning in today to my review of Double Dragon 4. Now I'm here today to give you my honest review and to say that after completing the main story mode as well as sinking some considerable time into its tower mode, I'm not buying Double Dragon 4's abysmal 49 overall Metacritic score and neither should you. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I want to kick off this review of Double Dragon 4 by reading you guys an excerpt from the actual Double Dragon 4 website, which I thought was pretty cool. And essentially it says, Billy and Jimmy Lee are back and they brought the 80s with them. Except this time, the battlefield has moved to Japan. Key team members involved in the 1987 arcade version, including the original planner, designer, and composer, have teamed up to recreate the next chapter in the Double Dragon Saga. Double Dragon 4 brings old school sensibilities and merges them with current day expectations to create the perfect follow up to the beloved beat em up series. So right there man, just reading that excerpt from the website that's on the actual description, that got me pumped. That's just exciting to me to hear that they actually went out, Arc System Works, the developer, and got the talent from the original Double Dragon. So that just tells you how important it is to them that they stay close to the source material. Now guys, if you've ever played a beat-em-up game before, or even the previous Double Dragons, you know that beat-em-up games don't have much of a story. Just like if you were to pick up any platformer there's not going to be a really deep story that is to be expected right however i am still going to give you guys the story so after the defeat of the black warriors in double dragon 2 billy and jimmy lee look to spread their sosutkin martial arts by establishing dojos across the country totally reminds me of cobra kai by the way You think this is the end of it all, man? I'm gonna open Cobra Kai dojos all over this valley! Hell! I might even teach for free! However, they soon face a new threat in a gang called the Renegades, who've teamed up with the Black Warriors to put an end to Billy and Jimmy once and for all. So to jump into the gameplay guys, gameplay is exactly what you'd expect from previous Double Dragon games. If you've never played Double Dragon, the gameplay is what you'd expect from other games in the beat em up genre like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 for Nintendo, Final Fight on the Super Nintendo, or even the Streets of Rage games on the Sega Genesis. Graphically, this game is not meant to blow anyone away, and I'm sure you guys can see that by the footage playing. In fact, the development team's goal was to actually mimic every aspect of the original NES Double Dragon trilogy. So in that respect, they completely succeeded. So it's important that you don't go into this game expecting modern day graphics. As far as the sound, I tried the game using the retro music and the modern. So you have two different sound options. And I thought both were pretty good, but I found the retro music to suit the game perfectly since it feels like a direct continuation of Double Dragon 1, 2, and 3. Now as far as who this game's for, I would say it's for fans of the beat em up games from the 8 and 16 bit era. And certainly fans of Double Dragon will feel right at home because this feels like a direct continuation of the first three NES titles. From the graphics to the enemies, the sound and the gameplay, although the gameplay is enhanced a bit for modern times that we're in, which is 
pretty cool. Now as far as difficulty, there is only one difficulty mode, but overall I didn't think the game was too difficult. The good news is, is that if you do use up all five of your continues and have to start over, you don't have to start from stage one. There's actually a built-in stage select option, so if you made it to say stage 10 out of 12, you can start a new game on stage 10 with all five of your continues in your back pocket. Now growing up playing every Double Dragon game, that was not a luxury we were afforded back in the day. And I think most people will appreciate not having to start over from stage one. Now, if you guys are wondering if there's any sort of grind in this game, there actually kind of is. So completing the main game mode has no grinding elements, but there is some trophy grinding if you're into that, which I'll touch on a little bit later in the review because it's tied to a pretty fun additional game mode outside of the main story mode. As far as like what kind of emotion you get from this game, guys, Double Dragon 4 made me feel like a kid again. It's not often we receive a numbered sequel to a game more than 25 years later, because that's when Double Dragon 3 actually came out back in 1991. But what's even more rare is that everything feels, plays, and looks the same as Double Dragon 1 through 3. It actually feels like this game could have released on the NES back in the day. Some may not appreciate the old school nature of it, but I think that's what makes this game so cool. Like imagine for a moment if Nintendo made Super Mario Bros. 4 and it felt, played, and looked like a direct sequel to Super Mario Bros. 3, but Nintendo decided to release it now. That would be pretty amazing, right? Well, it's the same thing here in my opinion for fans of Double Dragon. If you enjoyed Double Dragon 1 through 3 on the NES, then you owe it to yourself to pick this game up. Now as far as replayability, in addition to the story mode, Double Dragon 4 features a 2 player duel mode and a tower battle mode. Dual mode turns gameplay into a fighting game, with new characters being unlocked by playing through the story. In Tower Battle, the player must clear rooms of enemies to climb the tower, unlocking new characters to play as along the way, which was really fun. Now guys, when it comes to the fun factor of the game, when playing or reviewing games, I think one of the most important questions we have to ask ourselves is, are we having fun playing this game? Because if we're not having a good time, then we should be taking that time and using it somewhere better, right? I can undoubtedly say that I had a lot of fun playing Double Dragon. And after I beat the story mode, I did do the tower battle mode and I made it all the way to tower 59, but there's 100 towers. So I collected four bronze trophies and one gold trophy for getting to tower 50 but I also unlocked a ton of new playable characters from the Double Dragon franchise, including some pretty obscure playable characters. Each character has the same moveset they use when you meet them in the story mode and fight them. So it's pretty cool that you get to control all these different enemies now and use their special moves. And you can use them in the tower mode or the story mode. Like who wouldn't want to control a Bobo? You know a Bobo, right? The guy who like walks out of the invisible door and in the boulders from the original Double Dragon. Sonny Lee, the third brother that only appears in the arcade version of Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone, is even an unlockable character. So some pretty awesome unlockables for fans of the series. Now as far as how long it took me to beat the game guys, I mean it was pretty quick. I beat the game in about one and a half hours while taking some pause breaks to write down some notes for this review. Now, according to howlongtobeat.com, if you want to 100% the game and get all the trophies and unlockables, you're looking at somewhere around 10 hours. Now, as far as the price, guys, I bought this game years ago and decided this would be a good place to start my backlog with a game that I could beat and enjoy in just a few hours. Now I checked the PlayStation Store and Double Dragon 4 can be obtained for just $6.99, which I think is a great deal, especially if you're a fan of the Double Dragon series or beat em up games in general. 
The sad thing is, I think if this game came out today, that the unlockable characters would probably be only available in the form of paid DLC with the rate things are going. So I appreciate that everything you see is what you get and it only costs seven bucks. So overall guys, if you're a fan of Double Dragon, then you absolutely owe it to yourself to pick up Double Dragon 4. Double Dragon 4 feels like it was made a year after Double Dragon 3 and then was sealed away in a vault for 25 years. And I appreciate that it feels like this game was created in a time capsule. I wasn't necessarily looking for Double Dragon to reinvent the classic Double Dragon formula. What I really wanted was something that felt like a continuation of the NES Double Dragons. And to my surprise, that's exactly what we got. So with that said, my level of satisfaction is completely secured. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up my review for Double Dragon 4. I hope my review today has proven to you that Double Dragon 4 is worth picking up and enjoying for only $7. Now, if you enjoyed my review, please press the like button and drop a comment. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. As always, thank you for tuning in and hope you all have an awesome day. What's up guys, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button as it helps me out a ton. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Over here to the left, you can find all my social media info or just remember to search for ThunderSteve85. As always, thank you guys for tuning in and remember, you're never too old to play video games.